Hey, this is the ultimate guide to weights, weight systems for free diving and spearfishing. In this video, I'm going to cover weight belts, types of weights, vests and harnesses, how to get weighted, and some overall good general advice. This video is going to be useful if you are a beginner or intermediate level spearfisher. It's going to be good if you're a beginner because you don't really know what to look for. Or if you're more intermediate, it's still going to be helpful because I'm probably going to cover some things that you haven't thought of or you haven't tried out for yourself. So keep watching. This is going to be a useful video. Now I'm going to be mentioning some brand names in this video. So don't get too hung up on the brand names. The thing about brand names is that they're not really that important. Uh, you know, the componentry, the things that the weight belts and weight vests and stuff they're made of, sort of the same throughout the world. So really what you're looking for is you're just looking for the materials, what it's made of, and you know, how it functions, and is it going to be comfortable for you? Now, myself, I'm an overweight guy, right? The thing about being an overweight guy is that you need a hell of a lot of lead when you're free diving and spearfishing because fat is lighter, more floaty than muscle. So you end up needing a lot more lead strapped to your body to actually get down and be neutrally buoyant. We'll explain that later in the video. See, there's not many sports out there where the overweight guy actually has quite a good insight into how the sport works, but this is one of those rare specific examples where because I'm overweight, I've had to try out a lot of different weight systems in my time spearfishing and freediving. So I've got a lot of stuff to show you here. So let's get started. So there's this a kind of rule of thumb out there that says 10% of your body weight, that's what you should be aiming for in terms of putting weights on your body. So I'm 135 kilograms. So I should be aiming for approximately 13.5 kilograms of weight. But there are some things that you really need to take into consideration when you know figuring out how much weight to put on you. You want to be neutrally buoyant at the depth that you are planning to dive. So for a lot of new divers, you're going to be diving at the sort of the range where I'm at, you know, sort of one to five meters. You know, maybe you feel only comfortable very, very shallow, sort of one to two meters. Maybe you're a bit more comfortable, a little bit more skilled, you know, go down to five meters, maybe 10 meters. You want to be neutrally buoyant at whatever depth you're going to do most of your diving. So if you're going to dive down to five meters to try to shoot a fish, that's where you want to be neutrally buoyant. So my advice is to take that 10% and you've got to play around with it a wee bit. You've got to buy some weights, put them on your body, go out there, get in the water, dive down and just see where you're sitting. You know, are you going to have to hold on to seaweed to, you know, stay grounded to the bottom? And if so, you know, how hard are you having to grab on? You need to take into consideration your body weight and your body type as well. So for me, you know, I'm overweight, a lot of fat. So somebody like me, you know, you possibly need a wee bit more than 10%. Someone who's muscular and not, doesn't have any fat, they, may, they might need a little bit less than 10%. You need to consider your wetsuit thickness as well. I typically go for a three millimeter wetsuit because uh, here in Canterbury, here in New Zealand where I live, uh, we only really have good, about six months of good diving throughout the year. It's just a case of the summertime, the temperatures are sort of 16, 17 degrees in the water. Three millimeter wetsuit is okay. If I'm gonna, you know, sh swim in the shoulder seasons or in the winter, five mil wetsuit is more, more of the way to go. I figured it out for myself that I need approximately 13 and a half kilograms for uh, summertime diving with a three mil wetsuit and approximately maybe 15 to 16 kilograms for five mil wetsuit for winter diving. But ultimately, there is no hard and fast rule to figuring this out. There are people who claim that they say they know exactly how much you're supposed to put on your body. Really, it's just a case of try it out and have a go. Right, so let's have a look at the belts. The first belt you're going to have a look at is one of these. This is a standard nylon dive belt. More common with scuba divers, but scuba divers will use the rubber ones as well. The nylon dive belt goes around your body. Now when you're fitting a dive belt, you ideally want it to have it sit quite low. You want to be having it roughly in line with the bones on your hips here. The thing about the nylon dive belt is it doesn't stretch. That's not really a ideal, it's not really a good thing. The reason, the thing about not stretching is that when you're underwater and you're under 
five meters, ten meters, whatever depth you're at. Once you start getting down, you know, below a couple of meters, the water pressure actually starts compressing your body. It actually, you know, compresses your internal organs, compresses everything. But when you put the nylon dive belt around your body, it doesn't stretch. So, you know, the water is compressing, but the nylon dive belt is not expanding or contracting. It's just set at whatever, uh, you know, circumference you had when you put it on. So what divers often find is when they're diving with the nylon dive belt, the belt starts sliding up and down your body, which is why a lot of people don't use this. Let's move on to the rubber weight belt. So here's the rubber weight belt. Functions exactly the same way. There's a couple of different types of buckle here. This is the clasp buckle. You can also get the Marseille style buckle. Put it on the same way. And of course the thing about this is it stretches. So just as we explained before, when the water pressure compresses your body, this thing stretches to accommodate, which is ideal. That's what you want. Now let's talk about some of the types of weights. We'll start off with buckle weights. This is a standard buckle weight. They all have this kind of three-pronged design here. It's very simple the way it works. The belt just threads through. That's how a buckle weight fits on your weight belt. Then you've got slide-on weights. Here's a slide-on weight. This one's 1 1.5 kilograms. Now I want you to pay attention to this. The slot is quite narrow. This particular slide-on weight is designed for the thinner nylon weight belt. Now, of course, if you use this, they're going to slide around. How do you fix this problem? You use one of those, or more than one of those. You'll have to use several of them. These are little plastic buckles you can buy from dive shops, scuba dive shops. They attach and they stop the buckle from sliding around. Now if you're going to buy this particular type of weight with the thin slot inside, be very careful. I'll tell you why. Because these cannot be used with a rubber weight belt. The rubber weight belt won't fit in there. So to be honest, don't buy these. Buy this one instead. This one is a Rob Allen. You can actually see the slot is a little bit bigger. And this one is designed so that the rubber weight belt actually fits in. And then you can put, you know, these ones with the bigger slots onto your rubber weight belts. Here's another one. This one's been battered and bruised and used quite a lot. It's got the wider slot. This is an Ocean Hunter dive weight. This one is designed to be contoured to your body. It's a slide on weight. What I will say about this one is that it doesn't really contour in quite the way that you'd, you'd think. Sort of the idea behind this one is it's going to sit around your buttocks and contour to your body. It's, it doesn't always work in, in the way it's intended though, to be honest, but that's a contoured uh, slide on weight. This one is called a pinch weight. I think this is about 250 grams. So that one slides onto your belt and it's used to put just a little bit of extra weight onto your belt. Pinch weight. They're good to have a few of these. And lastly we've got plates. Plates fit into weight vests like this uh, Boche spot vest. You'll see this vest later in the video. This is what the plate looks like. This is a 500 gram plate. This thing just fits into your vest. This particular vest has six pouches on the inside, can hold about five to six kilograms of weight. I'll explain why you want to use this later in the video. Okay, so here is a completed weight belt. Now this one in particular has three weights on the back of it. These three weights are actually brand new. They haven't been used. That's why they're all sort of shiny and chrome looking. They, they are lead, they will fade, just like all the other weights. 
and it's got on these sides 1.5 kilogram buckle weights. So they're all buckle weights, 1.5s on the side, 2 kilograms on the back, totals about 13 kilograms in total. This weight belt is roughly about right when I wear a 3mm wetsuit. So let's put it on. I'm going to show you the way to struggle and I'll show you the way to do it right. <coughs> this is the way to struggle. Alright, that's how you put it on when you're struggling and I'll show you the an easier technique. Alright, so you've got a heavy weight belt here. If you're like me and you've got an extremely heavy weight belt, this is the technique that you use. And you basically bend over and use gravity to your advantage. So I've laid it down on the ground. Step over it, grab the sides, pull up, put it on your back. Step over. Grab the sides. Pull it up onto your back. Now you see what I'm doing here, I'm arched over and I'm actually using gravity to help me. So right now my back is taking all the weight, it's just holding on to it. Then thread it through, whilst you're hunched over, find roughly where that should go. Stand up and your belt is on. When you've got loose excess strap hanging around like that, just do a single tuck. like that and you're all set to go in the water of course the shucking procedure for a weight belt is to do a single pull through your buckle it loosens off and the belt drops away and falls away that's how you shuck a weight belt one of the safety considerations you have to take into consideration when you're choosing what to wear now I'm filming this video wearing this tight fitting rash top for a specific purpose and that is so that you can see how this sits on my body when you're wearing a single weight belt like this, you want it to sit nice and low, not up here by your belly button. You want to sit it to sit very, very low around your hips. The main reason for that is that your hips, where the bones are, that's going to be the point around your waist where you're going to have the least amount of compression uh, by the water, you know, changing the shape of your body when you get underwater. So along the back, you want those weights on the back to be just sitting above your butt and you want this, any weights along the side to be, to be, to be just nice and comfortably placed uh, around, around your hips where the bones are but what if this situation is just too heavy there for you like what if you're a big guy and you require a hell of a lot of weight and this just isn't comfortable having all this weight on a single weight belt well there's another option and that other option is to use a single vest or a combination of a harness and a belt. So let's have a look at those. Now this big weight vest here is called the Wetty Weight Harness. It's by far my favorite. This particular type of harness is very good for shore diving. With shore diving you have to climb your way over rocks and you know you've, you've, you're carrying a lot of stuff. You've got your fins in one hand, your spear gun in the other, your float and catch bag in your third hand. You know, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff to carry when you're shore diving. And when you have to walk long distances, and when I'm saying long distances, I'm talking like 100 meters or whatever, and you've got, you know, that big, heavy, you know, clunky, uncomfortable weight belt around your, uh, around your kidneys, around your waist, around your hips, it's not comfortable. This, by virtue of the fact that it has shoulder straps, gets the weight off of there and puts it up there. So let's try it on and have a look. Now I've modified this harness a little bit. It has three main plates to it. It has the side plates and it has the back plate, which is approximately 10 kilograms. Of course, as you know, I need a wee bit more. I need about 13 or 13 and a half. So I added a couple more buckle weights onto the sides here. Brings it up to about 13, which is about right. This particular vest, I've also added one of these D-rings. You'll see this on most of my weight belts. I have a D-ring and that's handy if you're gonna clip something on, like you've got a power knife, or a dive torch, any sort of tool that you're going to 
attach, detach, sometimes have it in your hand, sometimes not. You want a D-ring on your belt somewhere for clipping it on and off. Don't get hung up on the brand name, but this particular style is actually my favourite one. The downside to this though, it's a little bit less safe, so you have to be careful. Don't ever push yourself too hard in terms of your depth and your breath hold and your diving ability when wearing this. Because making a, doing a quick release on this thing is not as easy and simple as a regular weight belt. You pull that out, guess what, it's still hanging on your shoulders. You've then got to go through this process of putting your arms through the straps to get it off. So it's a great harness, but it's a little bit less safe. So just keep that in consideration if you use one of these. So what about you don't want all of the weight in one garment? You can put it into two garments. Well, we've got a solution for that too. We can combine it with some weight around the weight belt and weight around the chest. So let's show you a couple of these harnesses. This one is called the Boche Spot Vest. It has a plastic buckle down the bottom. This buckle is designed to fit onto the back of your weight belt. And then when you shuck the vest, the buckle slides away from the elastic band at the bottom. The shoulders are basically made of elastic. They've got a lot of stretch to them, which is great. The downside to these is that they tend to slide up and down your body quite a lot. So you have to be quite you know, mindful, try to get that um, try to get that buckle connected to your belt so that it doesn't slide up and down because if you don't have it connected this thing is going to be sliding up and banging into the back of your head so we'll put it on and it's got an unusual way of being put on and you'll see it takes a wee bit of practice and you have to come up with your own little system and a, a way to figure out how to do it because you almost need three hands so I grab these two buckles with this hand I get one of the side straps, feed it through, change over with fingers, hold on there. Grab the other side strap, feed it through. Now I've got both hands on the buckles and I attach it. That's how you put on one of these, this style of vest. The upside to this style of vest is that it gives you room to breathe. When you're in the water and you're breathing up and you're about to go under, You get a big lung full of air and your torso actually expands a little bit. It's not really noticeable on video but it expands a little bit. And this thing because it's got these stretchy shoulders and because um, of the way it's designed and this sort of comes up on an angle, this thing's actually quite comfortable to wear in the water in terms of being able to breathe in it. This thing holds approximately five to six kilograms. When you want to remove this thing, all you do is unclip this buckle and the whole thing's going to drop off. But this thing only holds five to six kilograms. So we still need another weight belt. So here's another weight belt. This has got about another seven kilograms on it. It's got the D-ring there. This particular belt is called the Moray Super Stretch Belt. This one, actually, this rubber on this particular belt actually stretches a little bit more than some other rubber weight belts. So whatever rubber weight belt you go with, just keep that into consideration. So there we go, now we're fully set up. We've got two piece garment now for diving. We've got our vest that we can shuck. With one clip it comes off our belt. that comes off as well. So both of these garments are fairly easy to shuck in the water. Important safety feature. So that's the Boche style vest. Well, let's have a look at the Moray one as well. Hit the streets like a Okay, this is the Moray harness as seen on spiky gold hunters. So let's talk a little bit about this vest. I've actually modified this vest a little bit, but I'll tell you about it first. It's got six big pouches on the back, and they're just pockets, and they take any types of weights. You just put in whatever you've got. Good if you want to get rid of those damn weights 
that don't fit onto the rubber weight belt. It sits quite high up on your back and the pockets actually come all the way around to under your arms. This is actually quite handy because when you're in the water and you're diving down, any apparatus you've got, particularly a weight vest, sometimes is going to want to slide upwards on you. And having those weights underneath your arms actually helps to stop the thing from sliding up. So that's kind of handy. So a lot of commercial divers wear this sort of, sort of vest because often they have to put some of the weight on their weight belt and they have to wear quite a thick wetsuit in very, very cold water. So you need more weight, more lead. So they'll use one of these as well. Now I've modified this one a little bit. So I'll tell you a little bit about the modifications. These D-rings here were just extra D-rings that I had lying around. And I attached these um, just so that I can have something to clip onto. You don't actually need these D-rings for anything. I took these shoulder straps and actually moved them closer to the center because this particular apparatus is designed for someone a bit smaller than me. So before I had modified it, these shoulder straps actually went all the way back to where the pockets were. So what it meant was when I was wearing this, the shoulder straps were tight, very, very tight up against my shoulders here. And when I'm in the water and putting my, I want to put my arms together, pull a crayfish out from under a rock, uplift a power, you know, this was very, very uncomfortable. So I moved these straps closer to the center. Another modification that I did was actually added some Velcro for a little bit of stretch. The Velcro was right here. Why did I do that? Well, as I explained before, when you're in the water, you do a big breathe up. And when you do that big breathe up, your chest expands. Now with this particular style of vest, the, the chest strap is all built in and it doesn't stretch at all. There are other styles of vest out there similar to this one that actually allow you to put a rubber weight belt through the center. Different design. This particular one has a nylon style belt. Same as this, non-flexy nylon style. And when you put it through, it doesn't stretch. So, and when you're doing your big breathe up, you can actually feel your lungs being constricted. So it's a comfort consideration you have to consider with this particular style of vest. As for shucking it, it unclips there, and it also you can also rip these off as well and let it drop off. One thing to take into consideration when you're talking about combining a weight belt with a weight vest is that you don't absolutely need to shuck both items in an emergency. So an emergency is you feeling like you're about to black out, like you've got your physiological internal symptoms whereby you know that you're really, really badly at the end of your breath. And for whatever reason, maybe it's a deep dive, maybe you've been down there for quite a while, you're gonna shuck one, at least one of your items. Now, when you've got your weight split into two apparatuses, let's just say it's 50-50. It doesn't have to be 50-50, it could be 70-30, it can be 30-70. It doesn't matter how you do it, let's just say it's 50-50. If you get rid of that weight belt, you've gotten rid of 50% of your weight, and you are actually gonna be buoyant and start floating up. And that's ultimately what we want by shucking a weight belt or a weight vest is to be floating up. So if you're going to combine a weight vest with a weight belt, you don't need to get too worried about your shucking ability as long as you can get rid of one. Okay, let's wrap up now. You must aim for a neutral buoyancy with whatever depth you're planning to dive at. That's the main determining factor with how much you're gonna put on your body. If you're a beginner, it's better to be underweighted rather than overweighted. You don't want to go out there into the water with limited dive experience, limited days, limited hours, and have too much on your body, and then sink, and then end up in a situation where, oh my god, I'm panicking, I've got to get rid of this thing. And then you get rid of the thing, and then you're like, oh geez, now I've got to go retrieve the thing. So, if you're a beginner or you're intermediate level, it's better to be a wee bit underweighted than overweighted. You don't want to be underneath 5 or 10 meters of water at the end of your breath, having to kick hard to get back up because you overweighted yourself. That's a recipe for an accident. Try on as many of these different systems as you can. Don't be afraid to ask other divers, hey, let me try that on. Put it around your waist, see how it feels. Different types of weights have different types of feels around your body. So it's really important to just try it on, see how it feels. Try it on the land and in the water. One of the alternatives to all of these weight systems that I haven't really talked about is actually lead shot. If you go to a gun shop, 
Uh, you can buy lead shot that's you know normally used to go into shotgun shells to shoot birds, shoot ducks. You can actually take that, put it into like a lycra sock, like a pantyhose, and tie it up, make a little baggie, and then you can fit that into a vest like this. Or into a vest like the Moro vest. Lead shot is an alternative. Comfort is important. Comfort is very, very important and ease of use. If you hate wearing the damn thing because you've chosen something that you find really uncomfortable and difficult to use and awkward, then you're going to hate diving. It's, it's, nobody ever wore a weight belt and said, wow, this is comfortable to wear. I like wearing this thing. <laughs> said no person ever. It's really, really important to get something that's comfortable and it works for you. Thanks for watching, and no hurrah.